Hi everyone, it's Cindy from Cindy's Art. Today I'm going to take you through my process from when I'm purchasing tubes of paint and what do I do with them till I wind up with a palette that I really enjoy working with. So first of all, I buy different brands of paint and I've been painting, I'd say, maybe about five years now, but I've only been on YouTube for two. So what do you do when you purchase your paints? You know, you've probably looked at a color chart like this one that Holbein has and you identify key colors that you want to purchase. Maybe you've watched other artists and decided to purchase those paints based on their recommendations. That's wonderful. Well, I don't know about you, but when I have a palette and I look at my paints, I cannot see clearly what those colors are. So some of the practices that I have put in place after purchasing paint is one, I do color charts and I created this format uh, and I created it in Excel and then I ran it on blank watercolor paper. So I could literally take this tube of paint and I paint a solid square that just has the paint without any water. Then I paint another square of the same paint and I drop water in it. And I put the name of the paint, the number of the tube, and I will do that for every single tube of paint that I purchase and I have on hand in my art room. And this, just an FYI, when I drop water inside of these charts, it's also showing me if this will gradiate, which means um, is, is the paint going to be dispelled when I drop water on it? Sometimes the answer is no, it's not. And that's because this is not transparent. This is a color that is more opaque. And when you put it down, there's nothing that's gonna come through there. Uh, you're not going to be able to see clearly another color that's underneath and you want to know that as time goes on but for the purpose of this video I just want to show you yep I saw a color chart I looked online to see what to purchase the next thing I do is I will create these uh, little charts of color so I can look quickly at what colors do I have in hand and this might help me identify what colors I want to use for painting a painting so that was Holbein. I have the same for Daniel Smith. I want to show you one other thing that's possible. So I looked at Daniel Smith's colors, but they had a, the possibility of me purchasing these, purchasing these dot charts. These dot charts have every single color that Daniel Smith makes. This is a dot chart. They have 248 paints. So I took one sheet of my dot chart and I matched it on a very large size of watercolor paper. And again, I put the name of it, I put a dot of water in it so I could look and identify what might gradiate. And this color right here that I'm pointing to is called Potter's Pink. It's beautiful. I love the other ones as well too, but this one just breaks apart. The paint kind of spreads and breaks apart. That adds great texture. So if I want to purchase some paints that have texture in them, well, this allowed me to do that by looking at a dot chart, creating a color chart. And I did that for all of these. So I won't show you the rest of those. There are 248 of them. So that's one thing I will do. Let me show you another thing that I will do. Besides those charts that I just showed you, there's times where I just want to see how these paints might interact with one another, or um, I will take a nice dark line at the top or a nice dark dot of paint and I'll bring it down with water. I want to see how much it thins out. I want to see if there's any texture that happens when I do that. Uh, this yellow, for example, is a very opaque. It's not transparent. I'm not going to be able to see colors really well underneath of this color if I painted und uh, this on top of it. This is going to block stuff. These are more transparent. That is something that's useful over time that you can get used to. So I will take different batches. I bought a bag of these paints and I perhaps would date this. And a lot of these are Daniel Smith. This is a core QOR brand. I can just tell by looking at it. So I will create these little strips 
and I will save them. So besides my color chart that I showed you, I will have these strips. It gives me just a little bit more room to play and see what these colors look like. So there's a few more uh, color strips. These are all the core QOR uh, colors that I uh, purchased. And there's one other thing that I will do with these color charts is I will put them into a, a palette. Anytime that I have created a palette of colors, I selected colors that I liked and I put them inside of these pans. I'll talk to you about pans another time. But when I did that, I created this little strip of a color chart. So that way when I am opening up a palette and I need to see what colors are in it, I can do that easily. This little travel palette is one of my favorites, but um, I only need so many colors when I'm traveling, so I took some of my favorites. And uh, I normally would write the name on these. Uh, and the reason why I like having this visual for me is uh, these colors in here are awfully dark. So when I look at the brown and I look at the blue, I don't know which one it is. This is a marine blue. Well, I can't tell that very well by what's in there. And I don't always want to uh, pull a palette out and then have to put some of the dots on a paper again and then waste more paper. So I take scraps uh, from when I've painted. I cut them up and then I'll cut them in a way where they fit in the palette. And then I can put them in here. So isn't that a neat little way just to help you when you're uh, painting? Let's see if I've got anything else. Oh yes. So when I have a palette where I've chosen colors, I've put that together, many times I will take the colors in that palette, take a look at the top line here, and take a look at the side line. Those, for example, would be the colors in a palette. And what I'm going to begin to do is to mix these colors together so I can see what colors I can create from a palette. And the other thing I will do I will play. This simply is um, a sheet where I had solid colors here from, a, uh, from one of my watercolor pans. There's the solid colors in this watercolor pan. There's the other ones. And I dropped these colors together just to quickly see what would happen if I tried to blend them. Do I get a gray? I have a color down here. This one is, let's see, I believe that's a Veridator and it's mixed with a Van Dyke Brown. And I love how it mixed because it has these little tiny uh, dots uh, that gradiate and that's little pigments of paint that settle in on the paper and it gives texture. So I played with these colors just to mix them so I could see what colors I could create with them. I will put that out along with my pan. Um, while I'm painting so I can identify if I wanted some dark greens I can look and see like what I could create with some nice dark greens or some dark browns um, that is so helpful when you're painting so take time uh, if you've got a Saturday morning or something you can get your paints out and you can start painting but you can also start playing with your colors to identify what would mix together and look well one of the things that I'm doing right now, this is the last thing I'm going to share, is I'll take some of those favorite colors that I have and I'll start to mix them on a paper and just let it blend in lightly. And I will tell you one thing that I absolutely love. This is Opera and this is Aurelion. Yes, that's Aurelion. And when you mix those together, they come out with the most vibrant oranges I have ever seen. I am so excited by the juice that I get. I say it's juice because it's vibrant. Um, I just love the richness of uh, orange colors. And I'm always looking for the brightest orange I can find. And I'm finding I get it when I mix these two colors together. There's other ones that work well. So let me pause there. So I went from you selecting your colors and selecting your paints. You can do um, also by uh, a dot chart where you can create a sample of those colors. And then you can decide what you want to purchase. You can do that. 
You can also uh, create those charts based on the different paints that you buy. These are Holbein paints. This one is a new one for me. It's Sennelier, and these are French, and they are created with honey. So they have a honey in there that makes them um, very, very soft. Even when I squeeze this paint out on one of my watercolor pans, it will stay soft. It's easy to activate. Add a little water, it's ready for me to paint with. Holbein is an incredible quality. I also showed you Daniel Smith today. Daniel Smith has a lot of gradiating paints. So I just want to encourage you that when you get those tubes of paint, you don't need to let it be a mystery as to what is in the tube. You can create your watercolor charts. You can create mixtures to identify what you can create. Have fun today. Thanks for being with me.